or welcome back to the PE Construction Zone with Ms. H, where we use everyday objects to build a strong foundation for physical activity and movement development. Today is about tossables, things you can toss. So let's start. Come on over here. Things we can toss need to be exciting so they invite movement and exploration. What we have here are plastic grocery bags that we are using to make a ball. What you do is you start folding them nice and tight, as tight as you can get them. And you do that with multiple bags depending on the size you want of your ball until it gets a good kind of size, say for example this. Then you get pieces of duct tape, nice and tight. And this is a boring gray, but you can use a beautiful blue right here. And once all the pieces are on there, you end up with this perfectly good, easy and soft duct tape ball. There's our first one. Okay, the second one, a commercial product, the scarf. This one has little bells in it, so there is an auditory cue to it. Instead of commercial scarves, we can of course use the same grocery bags again. The nice thing would be if you have a variety of colors. They are nice and slow to toss and catch. Perfect for beginner jugglers. Our next tossables, come on out, are bean bags and sock balls. Bean bags and sock balls are great because they stick the landing. They don't roll all over the place. Here's a simple bean bag, Ziploc bag with mulch in it. Good, hefty bean bag. This one is a sewn bean bag. If you put a plastic bag inside, you can take it out and actually wash your bean bag. Put the plastic, in this case with rice or beans, back in the cover. It has a little Velcro sewn on the inside to hold it in together. Again, a bean bag that sticks to landing and doesn't roll away. This is a snowball. Great for snowball fights. Across a net, across a line. Simply open a Ziploc bag. Take some nice white paper, crumple it up, and here is your snowball. Newspaper also works very well for that. Our next item, the commercial one, foxtail. The homemade one, a long sock with a tennis ball in the end. Now the one thing about foxtails and any of these, and again these don't really roll away either when they land, is that we of course want the students to hold it by the ball because we want them to learn to toss and not start playing with it. So it's up to you and your students if you feel comfortable and safe using them. Here's one with a shorter tail that can be tossed and then it rolls just maybe one revolution and then it stops on your gym floor. Another way to make sock balls is to simply roll up a pair of socks. Fold them once over and you have a perfectly good pair turned into a ball. This is the longer one again. Roll it all up, twist the end, and you have a nice ball to toss and catch with. Noodles, good for a lot of different things. Get a knife, in this case a bread knife. Take about an inch, saw it off, and you have a really fun little poppable. Squeeze it in your hand and it pops right up. And then you can try to catch it or shoot it to somebody else. Now the next section, is about retrievables. Retrievables means that they have a string attached. 
it increases the independence of students because they can get their own ball back. For example, students who are seated or have limited mobility can get the ball that they're working with back. Here is a cloth ball with a little Velcro and it has a balloon on the inside. So it is very lightweight, a bell on it for auditory, you can suspend it, they can use a hand for striking, a racket for striking, you can loop it around their wrist, wrist and they can use it just for tossing and catching. They miss it, no big deal, just pull it back in and they can keep going with their skill development. Another one on a string. Here's the commercial product. This is a soccer trainer. You can loop this around the waist and be free and practice dribbling the ball. Or you can hold it in your hand and dribble the ball. And again, it comes right back. They can keep practicing their skill. You can make that easily yourself if you have an old ball net cut out the corner, turn it in, loop a string, and these are old shoelaces through it, and then again, you have the same idea. A knot at the end to hold it between two fingers or make a loop around their wrist. Same idea, picking it and self-retrieval. Here are a couple of other ones, also called sometimes bionic balls. Here is the commercial product with a nice Velcro wrist strap for tossing and catching. And again, if it rolls away, no big deal. They bring it back in. It doesn't roll all over the place. They can keep going. These are easily made from wiffle balls. Get a wiffle ball, a piece of elastic, and you have your own bionic ball. Putting some bells or a couple of pennies in it gives it an auditory cue. These colors are also great, bright yellow, bright orange for any student who may have a visual impairment. That about our retrievables. Now these are peanut balls. This is again that cloth ball, but in this case it is filled with packing peanuts. This is the commercial product. Here is the homemade version. It is a beach ball, cut open, stuffed with packing peanuts, and closed with clear packing tape. Easy to catch, good grasp, interesting colors, nice and soft. Here is another fun retrievable. Can and ball, so if anybody is seated, they can still work it. We'll try and catch the ball in the can. To make it a little harder, try and catch it on the back of the can. All right. <laughs> Don't ask me to do that again. So I'm going to clean this up real quick. Homemade tennis ball can, string, and a tennis ball. This ball was resting on a ring. You can use your hockey ring for that to rest balls on so they won't roll away or you can make your own. This one is made for pantyhose. Easy, stick your hand in and start rolling it up. A little bit more and keep rolling. Keep rolling and twisting. Nice and tight. And then we have a really nice, very strong, durable ring that can also be used for tossing. Here's the commercial product, a foam frisbee to toss. Here's a homemade, this is the lid of a coffee can. Nicely decorated to toss like a frisbee. Same with this ring. You can toss it and it holds itself very, very well to be tossed. 
Last but not least, a little poppable. This is part of two cups. One is a little too flimsy, so we use two. We use a pair of scissors to cut the top half off. Then get a piece of tape, tape those two together. Tie a knot in the balloon, a large balloon. Cut the top of the balloon and stretch the balloon over the opening the two cups make. You can use some more tape to tape this down if you need to. And here is the end of the balloon at the bottom. Put a ball up in there, pull on the end of the balloon and it will pop right up and out. A great way to deliver a ping pong ball. That's it as far as all these homemade tossables go, but there are a few things I need to share with you. First of all is a disclaimer, because all not all these fun and exciting um, items are my ideas. Other PE teachers have shared them with me freely at conferences and online, so please do the same thing. Share them freely and don't claim them as your ideas. Now when you prepare your lessons, keep the following in mind. Choices is what we want for our students, so we increase their success, learning to take cha chances, have them stay fun and motivated, and individualize and differentiate. All this will help you do that, because you now have a lot of different choices. Do they need small objects to fit their hands, or larger? Soft, that are easy to grasp, that they can pinch, and then toss. It's also safer, harder objects that will roll better or that go further. Do we want visibility? Bright yellow, bright orange. Do we need auditory? Do we need to attach bells to the objects? And that's it for today. I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me again. Until the next time.